check out what I got, a Sega Genesis. And this one, I'm keeping, because I bought this one for myself, because I've always wanted one of these. Well, I had one when I was a kid, but that's a whole other story. Um, this one apparently doesn't work. Uh, the guy says it doesn't turn on. I can tell you right now that switches feel funny. I think something's been spilled on it. Um, and I did plug it in. And you turn it on, the light does not come on. Now, I haven't plugged it into a... I haven't really plugged it into a uh, TV, but there's no power from the light. And the guy said that it doesn't work. So, well, first things first, let's make sure it's got power. All right, so let's see. We got the power. It's plugged in. You got third. Ooh, so it's... That's weird. Center's usually positive, but I guess Sega did something different. So, 13.7 volts. The power brick says 9 volts, but I'm assuming under load it would actually drop down to 9. So, at least we're getting something there, and it is DC. I haven't probed and see to see if it was uh, how clean that was, but uh, let's get it apart and just see what the inside looks like, and we can hook up, um, uh, you know, a power supply to it and see if it turns on once we get it apart. All right, let's back out a little bit. Now, unfortunately, this one didn't come with the uh, the port cover for the side. And this thing looks pretty pretty disgusting. Now, I don't know if that's a cap that leaked all over the place or some corrosion down there or somebody spilled something on here I mean I'm assuming somebody spilled something on here because this whole board is pretty nasty but I don't know what this is regardless it's got to come off and I think these caps here I'm going to wind up replacing just to be on the safe side and it looks like over here on the connector there's a lot of crud here too and it's down in there now that's probably water got in there somebody spilled stuff because there's no caps around there so I think it would be a safe bet to say clean the board off yeah, I mean you could see up in there that's And all that corrosion is, in fact, conductive. So I think it's safe to say that we need to clean the board off um, and replace at least some of these caps. I'm going to take a look once I get it cleaned up. Actually, when I, now that I got the top off, the switch actually doesn't feel too bad. This needs to be cleaned. Now, I know there's a lot of guys out there that you know, know these things like the back of, their, back of their hands. I'm not one of them. It's the first time I've ever opened one of these up. But I can also see that there's a bad solder joint right there I don't know if you can see it but it is moving all right so let's take a look at the bottom of the board and what's first thing that pops out is we got more flux residue around and that's I believe yeah that's the power switch there this here and this is on one side of the headphone connector and then up here, which would be the reset switch. So, I mean, I'm assuming this is just the way it was done from the factory. Um, they just uh, hand soldered these and just didn't clean it up afterwards. So just from a visual inspection, the underside of this isn't looking too bad. I'm not seeing anything, you know, stand out. Uh, this cap doesn't look like it's exploded or leaked over anything. Um... One thing I didn't do is um, I didn't take this off yet. Um, one of the reasons being is the stuff underneath of it actually looks okay just by, you know, just at first sight. Um, and getting these screws off is, like, impossible. So I want to get it working first, or at least replace these, clean up the board. 
and go from there. And uh, if need be, I'll be taking this off. Now, I, I do want to do some mods to this. I do want to do an RGB mod, um, or actually probably just an S video. Um, so I will need to be taking this off. If these regulators are actually bad, I'm going to have to take it off anyway. For the time being, I'm just going to leave this on, and I want to get these uh, capacitors off. All right, so I got all the caps out, except for I left two here, two in the front here, and that's because everything underneath of it looks pretty good. Um, again, I'm not doing a full resto on this. I just want to get it working. I want to clean the top of this board off before I do any more. And once I do that, then I'll clean the rest of the crud off. Then I'll also give the board a chance to cool down. So to do that, I'm just going to use some isopropyl alcohol. Let it soak in a little bit. And this will neutralize any electrolyte that came out of any of the caps. And you just use, I use a paintbrush. So I'm too impatient to wait for the order to come in. So I took some uh, caps from here. Actually, I tested all of them. The ones that were bad got tossed. The ones that were way out of spec definitely were tossed. Uh, I also have some other you know, used caps that um, I you know, got from other boards. These have all been tested, and they're all within spec. So we're going to use these for now. Um, yeah, I know they're not brand new, but I want to get this working. So let's... Um, Let's put these back in now that the board's cleaned up. Let's start here. C, what was this? C43. So C43 was a 10 microfarad. So I think one of the last things I have to look at before we plug it back in is this uh, board where the uh, barrel jack plugs into. And you can see right here where it was moving. So it was a bad solder joint. So uh, what I could do is just add solder to all of them. But what I want to do is add solder to them, wick it off, and then add solder again. Just so that there's clean, clean solder on there. This is extremely difficult to do in this position. And some people might be saying you should just remove the the jack, wick it, put it back in. And yeah, I should. You're right. I absolutely should. I'm not, but I should. There you go. Look at that. Look how pretty that is. And then there's just this busted peg right here that just needs some glue. And I added a 
little bit too much there. And yes, these cases are in fact getting cleaned. They're not right this moment. Later on, I'm going to do that. Um, I want to make this work first, but I'm going to take these cases and thoroughly clean them out. But that would be a later project. Okay, and then we'll just put a tiny bit of tape on there just to hold it in place until the glue sets. So I got it all together. I got the sound hooked up. Hopefully that works. Uh, I just heard a click, so I think it does. Um, let's put an LED in here. I got a game in here. It's uh, Sonic and Tails 2. Or Sonic 2, Sonic and Tails. Whatever. I don't even know if this game works. But we're gonna find out. All right, so here we go. We got power to the power supply. Is this plugged in? We got nothing. straight from here volts because that's what it says it needs and now I'm not gonna give it power supply says it's uh, 500 milliamps so we'll give it that I it's only gonna use what it needs but I don't want this thing set at 5 amps and if there being a short on the board and this thing blowing sky high so Alright, so this should be, I'm assuming that this is ground. Yeah, alright, so this is ground. Oh, we got something. Five volts going into the regulator. You get 3.4 coming out. Um, do we need more current? Let's get a little more current. Same deal. Got eight volts going in. We got four point nine eight coming out. Well, that's a little bit better. And 
and they're not even getting warm. Let me try another game just out of curiosity. Hopefully I'm not burning these games up. Same deal. All right, well, this is going to require a little more troubleshooting. Maybe another bad cap. Maybe one of these chips is cooked. Um, not too sure. So I'm going to have to look into it a little bit further. I'll be doing that later, though. See you next time.